SPF is for Sender Policy Framework. And this is basically a process or a protocol to make sure that email is only sent from authorized email servers and trusted sources for your domain and organization. It is also to make sure no unauthorized email is sent with your identity and name so it will help you prevent and protect against scams and email spoofing using identity and domain name. So the concept of SPF is very simple really, it, it's not that complicated thing. So I have a little chart here that will help you understand what SPF and how it works. So I have an organization here, that's let's say organization A. So this organization is having two email servers and regardless of this logo, these don't need to be exchange servers it's just the things that i liked <laughs> so these are two authorized email servers that are sending email with the name of this organization domain which happens to be organization.com so when an email goes out from this organization the destination server or the recipient domain needs to verify that this email came from the authorized server or actually it came really from that organization the way to do this is using the spf record so the spf record is really just a txt record that you add on your domain dns soon that tells any destination or any recipient part of the email flow that the authorized email servers for your organization are server one for example or server two or whatever servers that you have so the the sample records that you see here are just as a snippet or a demo for what the spf record will look like for a generic organization regardless of what they are using whether g suite or any other third party email service so first of all you have to define the the a records for the email servers and as you can see i have mail one and mail two that points to the sample IPs that I have here and those are the public IPs for those servers. Now these public IPs should not be the, exa the, the direct IPs for those two exchange servers or to those mail servers because you should not publish your mail server directly to the internet of course. These can be the firewall IPs, can be the email security appliance that you're using or whatever IP that is mapped to the email server that is sending messages. So once you add those IPs to the DNS zone, then of course you will use them in your MX record and then people will be able to send to you as well and you'll be able to receive through these servers. So once you create the MX record and the A records, then you will have to add the TXT record after this. And this is the very generic syntax for that so you will type v equals spf1 and then the type of the entity which is in this case ip version 4 you can add a record or mx or ptr i will show you the syntaxes in a bit now so you add all of your email servers in here and then that's it so whenever this server receive an email from your organization it will query the DNS, then it will retrieve the result and validate that this email has came from that specific IP address. So it means I have a legitimate email address and that email has been sent to me from your organization. Unlike when someone who tries to impersonate your email server and tries to impersonate your domain, when that guy or when that server tries to send an email to some other destination or to the same destination regardless really then that destination will query the dns and it will not find the the ip that sent that email in the spf record in this case it will not it either it will block your email or it will deliver the email message to the spam folder or to the junk folder for the user on that destination domain or server. So if it does not find the IP address who sent that email message, then it means that message came from a fake email server or from an impersonating email server 
and there might be a spoofing attempt for you here so you need to block it or put it in spam or whatever action that you define in the built-in anti-spam features or in your email security gateway that is maybe semantic or sonical or whatever so if you are really interested about finding more stuff about spf and how it works and all of this i've got some useful resources for you here starting with the official page for the spf policy framework the page that i want you to check is found in the deployment section where you will go to the spf record syntax that will take you to this page where you will find the various syntax and some samples for the spf record so first of all this will explain to you the various terms or the various keywords in here and these are very important especially the include because you're going to use it a lot later on so against each one of these things or keywords you will add a mechanism for example looking at the previous example that i have here you notice that i have all but before that all there is the tilde syntax which is the this one so this one means that soft fail in other words it means if any server that is not one of those two servers just send or just make a soft fail and deliver the email but put it in spam or mark it as having an issue with the spf record if you replace that tilde with a minus it means the email will not be delivered if there is some condition to block the emails who fail spf check or who get a fail on the spf check then the other thing that i want you to check is the results or the the, the explanation for each of these results so in the past the action will be to accept the message if the fail happened then the action will be to reject the message if soft fail happens then the result will be accepting the email but mark it with having an issue with the spf record now i really recommend that you read this whole page completely because it's a very useful page it's a very important page that will help you understand the concept of spf then the next resource i have for you here is the spf syntax validator and this is a website that i used to use a lot in the past and even now to make sure the spf syntax is valid before i add it to the domain dns zone because if you have the wrong spf syntax and if the spf syntax is wrong in your domain then you will get issues with the email delivery and people will not be able to receive email properly from you so all you have to do here is you take the spf record that you have and put it here and then make sure that the the result will be valid so just as a quick and a rough example for you here i'm just going to type whatever stuff that comes to my mind so for example i will type v equals spf1 and then plus mx then plus ptr and then i will add the soft fail which is all let me add another ip for example here that ip4 and let me type for example 1.2.3.4 and also let me add just to make it a little bit complex here include I do type it properly and then for example let me add google's spf record which i will show you in a bit so that is underscore spf dot google that is spelled correctly i hope so i click validate and you see now that there is a problem or a warning the thing that gave me the warning is using the ptr mechanism so it tells me that using the ptr mechanism is not recommended and the reason is found in this rfc so if you are really technical guy if you really want to see the foundations of everything then just go to this rfc and read the section marked here and you will find out why it is not recommended to use the ptr so if you want to make it more simpler then i will remove the ptr and i will change the all or the the soft fail to, to a, an actual fail and then i'll click validate again and you see the syntax validation has been passed right now so if you are looking to take this spf record in your domain then you are safe to copy it and paste it in your domain dns zone and then start using that for your email communication 
the final page that I want to show you here is the SPF record that is specific to G Suite and this link is from G Suite admin help this is a very useful read I really encourage you to read it to know the specifics for G Suite in terms of SPF implementation and what you should worry about and what you should know before applying the SPF record to your G Suite domain. If you want to find the exact SPF record for G Suite then you'll find it in this same page that is found at the bottom. So you'll go to the bottom and you'll find in step number five the last point is the SPF record that is specific to G Suite. So if you are only using G Suite in your organization, then you will just copy this one and paste it in your domain DNS zone and then you will be all set. Now, if you are looking to validate or to make sure you have the SPF record set up properly, then in this section, manage your SPF record, you will expand the verify your SPF record section and this link will take you to the G Suite toolbox and in my opinion this is one of the great tools along with the great email log search that are there to help you make sure your email setup is proper and your email flow is not having any issues so if you go to the G Suite toolbox you will just enter the domain name here and then click the run checks this will do a full analysis for your domain and make sure it will give you and show you all of the issues or all of the aspects about your domain SPF, DKIM and DMARC and name servers and MX records as well.